Next, a Living St. Louis special, a trip to South America, where the U.S. Embassy invited us to share the story of this St. Louis stepping team with the people of Colombia. For many, especially the young people, the documentary told a familiar story, but it came from a place they didn't expect. But for us, it was a dusty village that held the biggest surprises, including the discovery that a St. Louis story had beaten us here. It's all next on Living St. Louis. I'm Jim Kircher, and this is the historic walled city of Cartagena, Colombia. And we're here because we were able to bring, to share a little bit of St. Louis with Colombian youth. I think they got something out of it. I know we did. Let me start by telling you how it is we got here. You can't see the gentlemen of this! It was these guys who got us to South America. A couple of years ago, the Nine Network produced the documentary Gentlemen of Vision. You can go, you can start anywhere, but keep moving. Let's go. The story of a North County step team coached by Marlon Wharton, whose guidance and mentorship helps turn young men, many from at-risk backgrounds, into national champions. Leading them away from the streets and keeping them on track to graduation and preparing them to meet challenges they will continue to face as young adults. Shall I uh, not ask you anything? Shall I leave you alone? But now you assume that I'm just not going to graduate. I didn't assume a thing. I'm asking you. The film was seen at the AFI Docs Film Festival in Washington, D.C. by someone from the State Department's Cultural Affairs Bureau. And it was chosen to be part of the American Film Showcase. Every year, films offering a view of American society and culture are offered to U.S. embassies and consulates around the world. If a film is chosen, the filmmakers can be sent there for screenings, discussions, and workshops. So after our film was sent out to the embassies, we waited. And then we got the news. For the 2019 American Film Showcase program here in Colombia, the U.S. Embassy chose Gentlemen of Vision for its central message, which is that it's not all about winning competitions. It's about working together and supporting each other as a team and understanding what it means to be successful through hard work and determination. This message is universal. The story of Marlon Wharton and the step team he leads is not only inspirational, it also resonates with audiences here in Colombia, where 41% of the population is under the age of 24 and unemployment and high school dropout rates are significant challenges. When I see you, I don't see a guy that's about to be a grown man. By the end of this year, you have no choice but to be a grown man. So you need to really figure out what your next steps are. Like what Officer Randall was telling you, you need to figure it out. Frank Popper and I, co-directors of the film, were not the only ones invited. Do, this, do the transition turn, do everything it requires. And this is the the embassy staff was so impressed with Marlon Wharton's work, they invited him as well. And we headed to Cartagena. This Caribbean port city was founded by the Spanish nearly 500 years ago on the site of an indigenous village. It is filled with history that continues to shape Colombian society. It was here that kidnapped Africans were shipped in as slave labor, and silver from Peru was shipped back to Spain. It was a key Spanish port in the New World and needed to be protected from Dutch and English interests and from pirates. Most of the city wall is still there, and every night people gather on that wall just to watch the sunset. The old city is a major draw for tourists. It's filled with people and horse-drawn carriages, colors and sounds. And while we were able to take it all in, it wasn't the main reason the embassy brought us here. So you want to tell me about this? Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> yes. This is what they gave us. Yeah, so Jim, you and I were invited to, when we were invited, uh, they said, we're going to bring you out here for orientation to L.A., USC. And they handed us this. 
I mean, this is really substantial. <laughs> quite, quite something else. Yeah, it was a little intimidating. It was intimidating. Say. Of course, the first sense is like, hey, we get to go somewhere. Right. Then the second is, well, we've got a job to do. They, they told us, it's quite serious here, that you know, when you're there, no relatives can come with you. Uh, you're going to be too busy. You're going to be screening films. You're going to be giving workshops. You're going to be, you know, well, we're being asked to be a U.S. envoy for yeah. the State Department. So I do want to say we had we, we did have some fun exploring Cartagena. So I want you to do you still have your hat with you there? Yes. This is the amazing thing. First night there, Marlon's out on the street buying a hat because you, you got to have a straw hat in Cartagena, right? Yes, you have to have one of these. This is a, my signature hat for the trip. Marlon Wharton's day job is counselor at Riverview Gardens High School. In this scene, he deals with a girl who has just found out she is pregnant. Huh? Yeah, because you probably wouldn't have the words for that. You can wave a magic wand and I had all the answers. What do you need from me right now? Shortly after that, he calls in a group of boys who had been fighting. Listen, 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 listen. I know this gentleman right here. I don't just walk up to him and say, you want to fight today? No. It's a reason why y'all don't like each other. Please get to the point. You got this woman ain't had nothing to do with him and all like. Okay, so now, now we get, right now we're getting somewhere because you wasn't helping me. Do you use a street? justice and the way they handle stuff in the street, we got a system in the process of how we deal with stuff in the school. Did you touch the system or somebody else did? Dude, somebody else did. What's happening to young black males out there acting crazy? What's happening right now? They getting shot and are they getting shot, just shot or are they getting shot and killed? Is this mess worth your, your life? No. Can't hear you. It's no sir, no, no Mr. Ward. It's not worth your life, man. As an unpaid step coach, he brings the same mix of empathy and discipline. He is understanding, yet demanding. He is, for many, a father figure for young men whose problems are not always of their own making. I've been through a lot of stuff in my whole life. Right now, we're gonna be struggling. I wish I could ask my parents for money. I wish I could have my dad around. I seen a lot of death in my life from somebody getting shot in front of my house. Right around the corner was the bloods, and right down the streets was the crazy. I had, I had a troublesome past. Addicted to drugs. It was just like scary. People get killed over things like that, and it's like, I don't think I want to have that type of lifestyle. He just whooped us. I got kicked out the house. Most of the time, my father was that, a drunk. That scarred me for life. People do drugs, needles, and stuff like that. Sometimes I do want to cry about it. I just got to suck it up. Why would I want to be the next black male to get locked up? We have dreams. Their cultures and languages are different, but the Afro-Colombian and African-American minorities have much in common. My main barrier, I believe, is racial discrimination. I feel as though people expect a lot less out of me. Once again, I'm African-American male, so, but when it's all said and done, it's about how much I'm willing to prove those people wrong. We made this, we were making it about a group of kids in St. Louis, about our community, but we knew that nationally this would be something possibly of interest, especially because of the events in Ferguson. Never thought about the fact that this might resonate in a country, frankly, that I know very, very little about. Yeah, and even with the language barriers, the cultural differences, you know, it, it, it almost did not miss a beat. Like, our biggest I think once we show the documentary, we got some of the best feedback that we've ever had about the documentary, and they got it, you know, and to have that happen uh, speaks volumes to what we were able to capture. Well, let's talk about, because I think the most interesting thing initially was the reaction to the film uh, from the young people that we met with. No, that was one of the biggest takeaways uh, for me. We kept hearing over and over again from audiences is that this film was a real eye-opener for them. They're used to seeing Hollywood productions. We thought that Americans' lives were perfect, that everybody lived in a big, beautiful house on tree-lined streets. And the fact that, that their problems were seen, they saw them reflected in the very issues that Marlon's dealing with was quite astonishing to them. It's probably what saved my life out here. I love it, but it was a lot of my cousins were getting, yeah. getting killed. 
The embassy staff who set all this up wanted to make sure that we took the documentary and our discussions and filmmaking workshops out of the historic city of Cartagena and off the beaten path. We were accompanied during the 10 days by a cultural affairs specialist from the embassy as well as an interpreter. We went to Turbaco outside the city to a cultural center where the film was shown to high school age students who were learning English and doing their best to use it with us. And then with another group that was working with young people on some of the same social problems that we face in St. Louis. We spent two days on the island of San Andres, which is part of Colombia, but where many there feel ignored by the mainland and culturally separated. It is a place that might be a paradise for tourists, but has limited opportunities for young people. A big part of the American Film Showcase is encouraging young filmmakers to tell their own stories about their own community. And we were able to view and critique examples of their work and give technical and practical advice. But the highlight of the entire trip to Colombia came in a place that, on its surface, is not that impressive. Dusty streets, wandering livestock, nothing that would tempt you to stop, and yet people from around the world come to see this place. This is the town of San Basilio de Palenque. It's an amazing place with an amazing story. San Basilio de Palenque was settled more than 400 years ago by slaves that had escaped from Cartagena. In the town square, there is a statue of founder Bencos Biojo breaking his chains. The Spanish forces could never conquer this town and finally gave it its freedom. It is considered the first city to win freedom from colonial forces in the New World, North and South America. Its residents are Afro-Colombians. Their African roots are strong and reflected in their language and music and dance. And just before our arrival, a group of community leaders, many of whom work with young people in the village, watched Gentlemen of Vision. What time is it? Who camp? Who camp, baby? Let's get and it. And then they met Marlon Walker. And they had just seen the film when then Marlon walked in. And of course, when Marlon's with us, we just let him walk in first and we can <laughs> hang back. And, uh, That's an just, easy entrance. Yeah, we're just support staff. <laughs> you know? Stop. It, it, was, it was incredible. And to feel at home, to feel like, uh, even though they don't have a central era, they don't have all the amenities that we're used to, but it was, it was the most comfortable place that I was, I've been to while I was in Columbia, and it was the most, um, the most hospitable place, you know, so I really was inspired by, by the, the youth there. But this is what we really came for, Palenque's own unique African-influenced music and dance. This building is the home of Kambaleza Mi. Local musicians here have developed their own hybrid musical style, combining their African roots with modern hip hop and incorporating and preserving the Palankara language. Performers have appeared at Lincoln Center and other folk festivals. But a big part of this is the work they do with local young Afro-Colombians. The Combaleza Mi leader goes by the name of Afroneto, and he is to these kids what Marlon Wharton is to the young men of North St. Louis County. He ran a tight ship with these guys, and they, they played the drums like it was nobody's business, you know? And that was their thing. And to see that, and to see them interact and be happy, you know, was inspiring. 
The under, other interesting thing about that group is that, like you, he expects those kids to take control, to have some leadership, to express themselves the, the way they want to express it. So they're writing their own songs, they're doing their own rhythms. And uh, that just reminds me a lot of Gentlemen of Vision uh, when, in the scenes where um, the guys are designing their steps, practicing their own steps, and you're, you're, you're not even there, you're off, you're, you're off on the side. And, and, and the fact that um, what they're doing has its roots in Africa, and then of course what you're doing with stepping has its, its roots in Africa. So that's why I say, it was almost like this was the most familiar place I was at, you know? And it's, it's strange how it aligned like that. You know, he told this story about, you know, the youth, and you know, he was just talking about it. But to go and see them was the magic. And, and, and I did see a lot of similarities to what I'm doing. He was able to step away from the group and they kept it going. And so sometimes, like you said, I have to go to a meeting or something. But I expect practice to happen. I expect the leadership to happen. Because it's not really about us necessarily being there, it's about the process. Visitors are asked to write their names on the wall. And Marlon immediately found something familiar. Oh, there it is again, Alpha Phi Alpha. So my fraternity brothers have been here to see uh, firsthand and, and be a part of this. And, and that's why I love my fraternity. Marlon and Afrinato walked the streets of Palenque with our interpreter, two Americans, north and south, talking shop, finding much in common. And while we thought we had brought a St. Louis story to this isolated village, we found the connection already there. I don't know, I was just thinking here, you know, it was interesting, the intersection of cultures. You're talking about, you know, there we are walking down the street and we see Black Lives Matter. And when we're in, in the uh, rehearsal space, Marlon looks up on the wall and says, my God, that's my, fr that's my fraternity up there. My fraternity <laughs> Very surprising. They had signed it like in a hundred different places. So that means that guys that are in the same organization have been there to support what Palenque stands for. So that that also, you know, spoke volumes to, you know, the world. Is, the world is watching. You know, the world. I think that's part of the power of that place is that it, you know, it's just this little tiny place. The population is what four or five thousand or something like that, and it's attracting people from all over the world. It's not that easy to get to. Not that hard either, for that matter. But I mean just this dusty little town. And, right, uh, right, and uh, a unique history. With a really unique, powerful history. And I think that's one of the reasons why uh, it was such a powerful moment for us, because these people there, I think they connected with us on a level that nobody else connected with us. They were really folks who were on the front lines of what you're doing. And they were looking for answers from you. I mean, you could see they had been struggling with some of these things for a long time. And, and that's what it's really about is, you know, eventually we have to get past all of the divisions. And I think everybody knows that, but the conversations, you know, are happening. But, but they, I guess, in some ways, uh, they're addressing it in their own ways. And that's, that's, that, that's also a good thing. If you love history, Cartagena has plenty to offer. There is a massive fortress built centuries ago, walls and ramparts, cannon trained on the harbor, tunnels and passageways. All of it, of course, built by slave labor. The walled city is filled with music and sounds, entertainers and vendors, including the famous Palenqueras. The women of Palenque who come here in their colorful dresses selling fruit, and posing for pictures. It is a colorful country which, like our own, has a colorful and sometimes difficult past. And yet here, too, there is intense pride. It was one of the reasons our film, Gentlemen of Vision, was chosen to be part of Cartagena's film festival. The festival's artistic director is Felipe Alhure. Well, when we watched the film, we could identify so many you know, realities that uh, our black and African communities share, you know, with the ones that we were seeing in, in that film in, you know, St. Louis, Missouri. You still act like you're in a game. This is the wrong place for you. So we thought, you know, 
this is a great opportunity to bring a theme in which we can see how other parts of the world have dealt with that, with, with that problem, with those problems, and, you know, without copying exactly, but adapting it to our reality, there is a lot of knowledge and, and good advice that we can draw from that. And we were provided, you know, you have seen the reaction to the film, the reaction to your presence, the reaction to Marlon's presence. We attended the film festival screening, but it wasn't in this beautiful historic theater. No, ours was screened outside the city center at a shopping mall multiplex to reach people who were not part of the film festival scene. Here, by the way, we also discovered one of the differences between American movie theaters and Colombian movie theaters. We're in, we're in Colombia right now, and this is a large coffee, and this is a small popcorn. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> After the screening, we answered more questions about the film, about St. Louis, about Marlon's work, and about the young men in the film. It was something that always came up. People connected to the St. Louisans in the documentary. Some identified with Marlon and his work. A young woman with sickle cell anemia zeroed in on the young man called Prodigy. And as always, the question, how's Cashew doing? Okay, I'm proud of you. I want you to stick to this yes, sir. positive stuff. That leave, leave the streets alone, man. Yeah. See, these guys love you, man. And they loved hearing his success stories, that he was working for Home Depot, that he was coming back from Tennessee just to give the team a pep talk. Right. He's become sort of a legend. Uh, yeah, and even Palenque had their own cashew, so we had that. <laughs> <laughs> they had their own cashew. He actually had cleaned it up, and, and, and now he turned away. He said he was, at one point, he was the cashew of the village. It's, it's amazing. The moments in the film that resonate with American audiences resonated with the Colombians. Um, you know, they totally got this whole notion that Marlon takes his trophy and you know, on the, on, the, on the heels of a win and puts him in the basement where they belong because it's not, about, it's not about the trophy. At the end of our final panel discussion in Cartagena, Marlon taught the audience how to step GOV style. Three, four, five, six, oh, six, seven, five, six, seven, eight. Marlon Wharton had to rush back to St. Louis to take the Gentlemen of Vision team to a national step competition, which they would win. Hey, grab a seat on this side, off the stage. But of course, he wanted to share what he had seen and heard in Colombia. Well, listen, I'm about to show y'all some of the things that, that we experienced. Oh, stop. Uh, the sunset was real, real, real epic to watch, so we watched the sunset a couple nights. Turn around. You, this was the African drum, guys. Oh, this is one of the guys who, who was, who, who was, he, was he, he wanted to step. Oh, he busted down, he's better than y'all. He can be you for sure. <laughs> hey, look, hey, they got my signature hat right there, you know what I'm saying? These are the kinds of trips where you bring back a lot of photos, a lot of memories. And while the job was to share this St. Louis, this American story, with them, you bring something back more than pictures. Bridges get built. They get something from us. We get something from them. That's the kind of thing that the barriers that they had. They, you know, uh, a lot of the people that were in the class that we taught had to catch two or three buses long ways to be a part of a, a, a program, to get experience to be able to come out and have an education. If he could have taken all these guys to Cartagena and Palenque, he would have. Because while the film Gentlemen of Vision showed Marlon's work as coach and mentor, it was also the stories of these young men that informed and inspired, and even in faraway Colombia, hit home. 
They liked that part, but that wasn't their favorite part. What do you think their favorite part was? Brotherhood. The brotherhood. They spoke a lot about the brotherhood. That's a good one. I just want to say thank you. I love all y'all. This ain't just no step team. It's a brotherhood. They all asked about Cashew. Yes, they did. You know, and they got, uh, 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 they talked to me about some guys. It was, they had their own Cashew. You know, he's like, yeah, I used to be out there doing X, Y, and Z, you know. I said, they used to be Cashew. They still laughing. So they were able to connect with certain people. But the part that they enjoy most, which is not like they being haters, they they enjoy watching you all get second place. Shake up, man. Okay? We're gonna shake up. Go up and shake the guy. We're not gonna cry. But but when we lost, what did I tell you all to go do in 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 in, in that moment? Sportsmanship. We shake hands, and they saw you all walk over and shake hands to these guys because it's not always about winning. Because I didn't know how they would take Jim and Vision's story. But they loved it. They loved everything about what we're doing with you all because they understand the big picture. What's the big picture, gentlemen? To be great in this world. To be great in this world. To be what? Passionate. Passionate. To change this world. Motivate. You all are making a difference whether you know it or not. You know, there was just a lot of parallel with our story and, and, and the lives of the people of Columbia. So just to hear that our story that was made here resonated well all the way across the world you know, was, was inspiring to me as well. It really, because their reaction was so intense, it just merely elevated my perception of what Marlon has been doing. A lot of pride in, in their country, their community. Um, I think in the same way that um, the kids you deal with, they have a similar pride, and yet much of the rest of the community doesn't see them that way. Mm. And a lot of the young people we met with were Afro-Colombians, so slave descendants, um, a minority group, and um, feeling like the rest of the country doesn't see them perhaps the way they see themselves. Yeah. Uh, you know, like I said, it's not a day that goes by that I don't think about some of the people that I met in Columbia. It just was a lot of hope that, that, that I walked away with. The people of Colombia, Katihena Palenque, this is a special step tribute for you. is made possible by the support of the Mary Rankin Jordan and Eddie A. Jordan Charitable Foundation and by the members of Nine Networks.